Well, Bruce Simpson at XJet asked everybody to make a remote ID video, so I'm going to do what he says. I've been watching him for 10 years or more. Great resource for all things RC, period, for years for me. Help me get going. And I'm going to call mine remote ID, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is the remote ID module I'm going to be working with. It's a drone tag DRI, little small module. The FAA promised lightweight $49 modules when they started talking about this. Yeah, this is the only one I've found that complies with that. Uh, it is small. It has a built-in antenna right here on this side of the uh, circuit board. So that's really the only good thing I can say about it is it's uh, 49 bucks. I've got three on back order right now, so supply is kind of a bummer, but that's what the FAA said. And here's their website. I'll put a link in the description for this. Drone tag DRI, uh, $49. And like I say, I do have one. They have one with a antenna connector. And then this one I bought just has, you can see the little etch right there. It just goes up and over and down a little bit for the built-in antenna. Uh, there's not a lot of information on their site about this. Uh, it's going to fit right in with my standard setup because I am so deep into telemetry and Mavlink. It uses Mavlink. Right here you can sort of see it coming out of a flight controller and connector goes over and plugs into this. And then you take another connector out of this and continue on with whatever you're doing with your Mavlink data. Or I suppose if you're not doing Mavlink or telemetry, you're finished right then and there. Uh, it does need voltage, ground, a transmit and receive on a UART, and clear to send and request to send. So on most flight controllers, you're only going to find one port for it. Uh, I use a lot of Matec controllers, and they typically only have one with clear to send and request, request to send on it. So I'm going to be putting this in line with my current telemetry circuitry by just going in and cutting the wires on the uh, telemetry connection I have right now and installing this in, the, in line with my telemetry radios and stuff can't really say much more about this in the good vein here's a kind of another picture that shows it in line and here's a telemetry radio here you may or may not have this I think you could just go with this part and be compliant a little bit more of their two offerings right now they're on back order so it's hard to get a hold of them here again is a flight controller with just a cable coming over from a telemetry connection into it and you're done i don't know anything else i can say good about this i, I don't hate remote id i don't like it uh, for fifty dollars I might be able to just take one of these and move it from platform to platform, plug it in when I fly on that platform, so it's going to cost me $49 total. That's kind of good. That's about all I can say in the good fashion about it. Uh, let's look back at the module itself. Another thing I don't really like about this module is the cable that comes with it. It is perfect for plugging into a Pix Hawk and then plugging in here. You're done. 
The problem is, is for those of us who make up custom applications like a Matec controller to whatever we're doing for telemetry, uh, it's one red wire and five black ones. And just going to be extra hard to do the pinouts on it. But basically, I'm going to take this cable and I'm going to cut it in half. Just like that. And I'm going to wire this side into the Matec controller, this side into my uh, telemetry, whatever I have on that particular thing. Uh, what comes to mind immediately is Dragon Link. And I've got Dragon Link receivers with those six wires going over. And basically, this is what I will be wiring into the circuitry. Uh, like I say, luckily, luckily, I have already had telemetry pretty much in mind all the time. Uh, the other bad things about this, I don't think this is going to have much range stuck inside a little RC airplane. I could be wrong. We'll find out when I start playing with it. Uh... I don't know what they're thinking with these things. Bad actors can take a RC car, put stuff on it that would be bad, run it down a street in a city up underneath a car, and do bad things. I don't think the bad actors are going to put these on their platforms. I do believe um, I will. I'm 70 years old. I'm on a fixed income. I don't have the time, the inclination, or the money to get in trouble over this when for $49 I can put one in my platforms and be done with it. I am compliant. They shouldn't be able to do anything to me about it if this only has a 10 foot range, whatever. I, I just don't think it's a solution to a problem. Now, I have seen other solutions out there. They're much more expensive, about $300 a pop. There are more solutions here. Here's your uh, Drone Tag Mini. It's a rather large box. It's $299. Their Drone Tag Beacon, about the same size-ish, $200. It claims a three kilometer range. There's no claims on any of these others for range. Here's something new. Can't find much about this one yet. Looks like it has to have two external antennas. So basically for me, uh, the whole RFID thing, I just don't think is well thought out. Uh, what are they trying to do? The bad actors are not going to do it. If they fly an airplane into a football stadium to do bad things, they're not going to put an RFID on it. You're not going to be able to tell who it is. The only thing people that are going to get hassled by this are the recreational flyers, maybe part 107 flyers, who are trying to be compliant. You know, the FAA it claimed at one point this was so we could fly beyond visual line of sight, which all of us want to do, can do safely, have been doing safely for years before they started this stuff. So I just don't see how compliant people putting these tags on them, flying within visual line of sight, is going to do anything. Uh, you know, they're going to be probably viewable if they're flying visual line of sight and if you can see the platform you're almost going to be able to see them it's just uh, a bunch of junk all the way around but again I can't be non-compliant because at my age I just don't have the time to be taken to court fined or anything like that over this junk when again $149 if the 
others don't come off a of back order soon I'll cancel the order and I will use this one in all my platforms I'll just pop it into each platform as I fly it so it's $49 cost to me if it doesn't have a range more than 50 feet it's not my problem I am just trying to be compliant now the part 107 people uh, they have even more bad for them there's actual true bad for them because any platform they fly right down to a two inch three inch whoop has to have a module on it and each of their platforms has to have their own separate module so if they've got 10 platforms they're out 400 and uh $90 right straight from the get-go again I don't think they're going to be doing much that they shouldn't be doing yeah. just really is a solution to a problem that doesn't exist in my humble opinion the only thing I can see that it does would be if they let us fly beyond visual line of sight out five miles and back and your drone's flying someplace it shouldn't be over a prison or something like that, then they could immediately find out whose it is and uh, come and talk to you about it. I, seeing they don't let you fly beyond visual line of sight, the only thing they're going to be doing with that is catching the ones who are already illegally flying beyond visual lines of sight. So. I think overall the whole thing's just ugly. Really, really ugly. Uh, compliant people. I don't see why they would get in trouble because they're not bad actors. Bad actors just aren't going to do it. I'm going to finish this up with that. And my whole statement is I will be compliant in September when I have to be. I've already got at least one here to be compliant on all my platforms, moving it from one to the other. But I'm not going to get much deeper into this, and I'm kind of really still pretty mad about Beyond Visual Line of Sight, when for 10 years before 2016 people were flying Beyond Visual Line of Sight, there were no major accidents or anything like that. And... Now most people are not doing that. It's just just really, really ugly. So that completes my video. Thank you guys so much.